KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. And the course lecturers are Raji Thotapalil, that is myself, and my colleague Daniel Monson. You have seen the introduction video regarding this course, which gives a brief description. Now, within this course, the contents can be divided into three blocks. Block 1 will describe introduction and theoretical background and block 2 will describe why there are EMC problems, the reasons for that. And block 3 will de deal with solutions to EMC problems. Now the course is uh, designed in such a way that on block 1, that is introduction and review of philatomantic fundamentals, we will spend approximately 20 percent of the course time. And for block 2, on high frequency behavior of uh, electrical components and interference coupling mechanism, we will spend around 30 percent of the course. Around 50 percent of the course will be devoted to describing various solutions to the EMC problems. These solutions can be different type of measures like zoning, control of interfaces, shielding, grounding, surge protective devices and filters. We also will deal with uh, EMC testing and standards, a short introduction to that, and some special EMC issues where you require some specific kind of uh, measures, for example, protection against uh, lightning phenomena and intentionally created electromagnetic interference. First we go to introduction. So this will be given by me. So this uh, chapter is divided into three modules. In module 1, we will go through the problem of electromagnetic interference and define what is meant by EMC or how to achieve electromagnetic compatibility. In module 2, common sources of transients will be described, light switching transients, lightning, etc and we will talk about commonly used EMC units like what is meant by a decibel and what is meant by uh, wave length. Uh, instead of meters, why do you represent in EMC studies how many wavelength long? then what is meant by common mode and differential mode currents and voltages. So module 3 will be devoted to some exercises and problems. This will be mostly in the form of homework that you can do at home so that uh, you become very familiar with the concepts introduced over here. Now what is meant by the problem of philatomantic interference. This particular cartoon was uh, drawn by uh, one of our students in the EMC class. Basically it shows, well uh, you have a TV screen over here and someone is uh, doing a vacuum cleaning and vacuum cleaner has uh, got a motor there. And if you had old CRT tube TVs, one could very clearly see lines on the TV screen uh, and an anoid partner over here. So you can see that uh, the lines may be due to the disturbance created by the motor onto the CRT tube. So this is one example. It can be a kitchen blender or any other or a drill 
electric drill or anything having a motor can produce this type of disturbances. So, this is uh, a fairly uh, less harmful form of electromagnetic interference. Sometimes uh, in the early days of pacemaker, there were some worrying forms of uh, interference. For example, when someone was talking over early versions of mobile telephone, it had interfered with pacemakers of patients. So, that is uh, more serious forms. Any of you traveling by airplane might have experienced lightning strikes to airplane while landing or while taking off. Uh, this is very common nowadays, but in the early days of aviation history, when it was a great concern uh, at that time. Uh, in fact, the branch of uh, EMC owe a great deal to the need for protection of airplanes from lightning strikes. Here you can see the challenge. Lightning flashes have several millions of volt and several thousands of amperes in a lightning flash. Whereas, modern electronics in the airplane that is controlling the flight has only certain volt and few maybe micro amperes or nano amperes of with hand, you know withstand capability. So, how do we reconcile these huge differences in, in the amplitudes? So, that is where the method of EMC is, uh, is coming in. Uh, you have to reduce uh, the millions of volts and thousands of amperes of lightning currents in the outside of outside skin of uh, an aircraft. By the time it reaches the sensitive electronics, it should be below few volts and below uh, nano amperes. So, how, how do we achieve this? So, this is what uh, we will learn in this course partly. Now, there are several other incidents of uh, electromagnetic interference from around the world. Uh, some of them are described over here. Say, for example, in the early days of anti lock braking systems, there were several cars experiencing problems along a stretch of uh, the German highway, which had close proximity of a radio transmitter. Then there was an incident of a US naval ship entering the Panama Canal without turning off its radar system and all the canal zone computer systems were destroyed due to the illumination of the radar. And you can describe several of these problems uh, here and you can find many of these problems by searching the web. And many of these problems have been since solved, uh, but new ones crop up every time new technology is ca coming up. Say for example, now there are a lot of talks of uh, completely autonomous vehicles with a lot of uh, control functions being done and what role EMI or EMC will play in the design of those systems. That is also a new type of challenge that is coming up. In the medical field, it has been known that several medical equipments are interfered with radio transmitter. Uh, it can be uh, radio transmitters of the of the ambulance or it can be uh, of the persons carrying it and often uh, in hospitals you have seen that mobile phones are prohibited from many rooms it is not only the noise pollution from the sound but also due to the fear of electromagnetic interference that is being done and while taking off and landing, all kinds of electronic 
uh, transmitters or operation of electronic uh, equipments are prohibited in airplanes. And that also is uh, prompted by the fear of electromagnetic interference because during takeoff and uh, during landing, there are so many systems working in the airplane that has to coordinate very well e with each other. So glitches uh, created by mobile transmitters inside the plane can cause issues and they want to prevent it and that is why uh, you have the standard instruction of switching off all the electronic devices or putting it in the flight mode so that transmitters are switched off. Now to define some of the terms, let us take this uh, very familiar example here. Uh, so you have a motor that is uh, working from the mains. So the, suppose this is a DC motor or a universal motor with uh, brushes or something like that. Then uh, the AC power cable, there is a junction, but this junction is feeding some sensitive circuits also controlling some other things. And there is motor control which involves uh, switching by semiconductor devices with very sharp pulses. Now there is some noise produced in the motor due to the brushes and commutation and there is some noise produced by the controls. All this noise of various characteristic part of it will be conducted along the lines and it can be distributed to through the AC power to the sensitive circuits and there is a potential for it to be disturbed. Then some of the noise, so these are kind of uh, transmitting antennas, this wiring over here. So that will be radiating into the air and sensitive circuit will be picking it up and this will be called the radiator noise. So noise produced in one system that is the source of noise can be coupled, you know here it is conductive coupling and or it can be radiatively coupled to a receptor or a victim where it can potentially produce uh, uh, disturbances. So we have introduced few terms here, one is the source of EMI, then you have the receptor or the victim that is being disturbed and you have a coupling path for electromagnetic energy in between the source and receptor. So this is uh, called a decomposition of the EMC problem. So the, you can have radiated interference, you can have conducted interference and you can have emission and you have susceptibility also. Now from these terms we can come to what, what do you mean by achieving EMC. So what is EMI? So it is uh, interference, so the effect, so that is what we see or what we experience. For example, radio noise, light flicker, no mobile phone reception uh, due to some, some reasons. Uh, and what is disturbance? The cause of the problem, say for example, it can be mobile phone transmitters, lightning, jammers, currents in some circuits, transients, fields, etc. And EMC is defined as uh, an electromagnetic interference uh, uh, issue. And when you have an electromagnetic interference issue, you are not achieving electromagnetic compatibility between the source and the receptor. So this uh, known, th this is called EMC electromagnetic compatibility. So we say that we achieve, it's this kind of a state. So we achieve electromagnetic compatibility if there is no electromagnetic interference. 
or uh, we call it as symptomatic interference only if it, if it causes a problem. So, if you do not have this problem between two systems, we say that okay, we have achieved EMC. So, EMC is a state of being that is desirable to have in one or between several systems. So, we can have a formal definition for EMC. This definition is taken from International Electrotechnical Commission uh, standard 60050, International Electrotechnical Vocabulary, Chapter 161 on Electromagnetic Compatibility. It states that ability of an equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable electromagnetic disturbances to anything in that environment. So, any device will produce electromagnetic fields, currents and uh, voltages and often it will not create any problem. Then we do not have any EMC issue. EMC issues comes only if it is creating a problem. And you have to think that you can have two perfectly harmoniously working system and say system A and system B. In system B at a later time you are making some changes and you are introducing new electronics or something like that. Then suddenly you might find that okay system B is now susceptible from system A uh, because the design of the system has changed and the previously existing electric and magnetic fields or currents and voltages are now becoming disturbing for system B. So, it does not mean that once you have achieved EMC, you are achieving it for all the time. Whenever you make system changes, you have to reevaluate uh, whether EMC is still being achieved. So, it is a, it's a more, it is more a dynamic thing, it is not anything static. Depending upon the operation condition of your equipment, your EMC status can change also because under some operating conditions you may produce certain kind of fields that may be more interfering. So, there is uh, another way of categorizing EMC uh, in terms of electromagnetic interference that is from the source side versus susceptibility from the victim side. So, EMC say there is an emission of conducted interference energy or radiated interference energy which may disturb system or if you are designing a system in a very harsh environment, look and approach it from another way. So, here you are trying to minimize emission to achieve EMC. So, from the source side, uh, you, you design the circuit in such a way that uh, emissions are a minimum, both of conducted as well as radiated. Now, if you are designing a system that goes into an environment where there is a lot of electromagnetic noise, you try to make the system susceptibility or immunity, you immune the system from conducted interference as well as radiated interference. So, from both sides you can approach uh, EMC. Now, you have seen the definitions for EMI and you have seen what is uh, meant by EMC and you have seen how EMI causes EMC issues. And formally we can define a system is electromagnetically compatible if it does not cause interference with other systems, it is not susceptible to emissions from other systems and if it does not cause interference with itself. So, often this also is a problem because systems have can have many various sub modules, module 1, module 2 like that or subsystems and one subsystem can cause an interference to the other subsystems then this the system as a whole may not work. So, even this also has to be taken care of. 
So, there are these three aspects to the electromagnetic compatibility problem. It cannot cause interference with other system, it should not be susceptible to interference from other systems and it should not cause interference with itself. So, in terms of basic decomposition of the EMC problem, we have seen the emitter and the victim and a coupling path. Now, later chapter when we go into the reasons for the EMC issues uh, and also how to solve the EMC problems, one basic presupposition is that you clearly know what your emitter is, the source of the problem and you have a clear understanding of where it is causing the problem, the victim. Mm -hmm. And often this is very difficult in a complex system and also you have to know what are the coupling path of the electromagnetic energy. Is it conduction, is it through radiation? If it is conduction through which kind of uh, wires or cables between the systems. Once you really understand the, the problem and all the pathways, then it is easier to design solutions for it. So, the ability to decompose an EMC problems into these three categories are very important and this is where most of the time will be spent by an EMC engineer. Now, to decompose the problem with more details, say so for example, you have the source here, number one, and the coupling path to the victim here, three, four, five are victim system, and the victim may have an interior as well as an exterior. So, coupling to the exterior and from there to the interior, so system internal coupling, then to that the system will respond, system response. So, it is a system response that will manifest, manifest as kind of uh, interference. So, that also we had to see. So, if you are able to decompose the problem like that, we have we know how to solve the problems also. And uh, in later chapter you will see theories of uh, transmission line mainly to be able to analyze the conductor transients issues. We will see the theories of uh, electromagnetic fields, especially uniform plane waves. And uh, different types of uh, Maxwell's equations, Faraday's law, Ampere's law, etc. That is to understand how electric and magnetic fields produced by the system coupled with other systems, because you have to do the mathematical calculations and mathematical modeling. And, uh, and also you have to see how common materials behave in the presence of electric and magnetic fields like metals conducting materials as well as non-conducting materials. This theory sections we will deal with in chapter 2. So, this is uh, basically an introduction to the 